Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Selenium with C-Sharp.net. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about NUnit in C-Sharp. So we have been working with NUnit from the day we started this project. And we have been using the test method of NUnit as you can see over here. And we created this NUnit test project by creating the project itself from a template, if you remember. I can just recall to you how we did that. We went to the file new project and then we selected the in unit from the test project over here and then we created this project itself so this in unit test project is nothing but a template in visual studio 2022 so once the project is created and once you double click this dotnet selenium over here you will see that in unit project template will automatically add a couple of package for you something like an in unit package an in unit 3 test adapter an in unit analyzer and it also requires a Microsoft.NET test.sdk. So these are the four important packages required for an NUnit to work correctly. So these are all automatically added for you once we added this particular project template. Of course, it has added an optional caller.collector as well. So all these are the most important packages which are automatically added once we created an NUnit test project template. So that is the reason why every time while we start writing any of our test method over here in any unit, it automatically get discovered in the test explorer over here. I'll tell you what I really mean about automatic discovery. We already touched about it, but I can again tell you or re-insist you how that really happens. For example, if I open the test explorer, pin it up over here, you can see that currently we have three tests. And now if I, let's say, I'm gonna write another test over here, I'm gonna say public void, test for something like this and if i just do that you will realize that automatically the test for is going to be appearing over here because it is self-discovered or automatically discovered in the microsoft visual studio and this is all happening because nunit is now tightly integrated in the vs test of visual studio 2022 so now if i try to create a test 5 and if i just save it you will notice that the test five is also gonna be discovered for us over here automatically. And these are all happening because of the test adapter of NUnit and the VS test of Visual Studio 2022. So that's about the test that we have used within NUnit. So what is this square bracket and the test within a square bracket? What do we call it as in C Sharp? Well, in C Sharp, we call this as attributes. And NUnit has got so many different attributes in itself. That is the power of NUnit. So all you have to do to use NUnit is just to use the attribute and all the magic begins. So I will quickly show you the documentation of NUnit. So if you just go and search for NUnit in Bing or Google, you'll get to the NUnit.org. And if you just go to this particular website, you will see that this is the NUnit website, which is going to tell you what this NUnit is all about. So NUnit is an unit testing framework for all .NET languages. It is initially ported from JUnit and the current production release is version 3. So version 4 is an upcoming version. It is still in draft, but it will appear quite sooner, maybe end of this particular year. Well, as that said, we are going to see some of the documentation of NUnit itself. So once I hit this doc, you will see that there is an NUnit doc and over here in the NUnit, you can see they have an NUnit 4 plan. So this is how these are all happening at the moment. Let's not worry about it because it's not released yet and it may be changing as well. So if we go to the get started, we have the installation. We have already talked about the installation using Visual Studio 2022. And they also have writing test. And you can see that the first thing that they talk about in the writing test is attributes. As I told you, NUnit is full of attributes and these are the things that we need to focus on. Not every single attribute to be honest, but some of the most important attribute that we need to use within our test, especially for Selenium testing. So you can see they have attributes like apartment attribute, author attribute, cancel after, category, combinatorial, culture, data point, data point source, descriptions, and there are so many things to be honest. And some of the things that we are going to be very much focused on, for example, is going to be parallelizable attribute run the test in parallel. And the category attribute is required if you want to define some of the category of the test like smoke test or regression test. We also use data point source and the data attribute, which is very, very important for our data driven testing. There is something called as test case source and test fixture which are very very important as well we also use the test attributes remember this is the test attribute that we have been using all these days for our test to be decorated that this is a test 
of n unit so that is the test attribute we also need the setup and the setup fixer attribute and a tear down and the tear down attribute so all these are very very important as well so these are some of the most important attribute that we need for the n unit to work with and once we have all these details over here we can then start working with it and they have got some example of how you can use the test case data test fixture data test context and things of that nature so we'll be talking about that once we get to those point when we get to the data driven testing and stuff but for now don't worry about it these are all the attribute that we have within the n unit itself so well as that said i'm going to quickly show you some of the attribute that we have been not using in our test and how we can effectively use that within our test and they are all called as hooks in the other testing libraries like JUnit or specflow for example so you can just use the hook to set up and tear down your test for instance if you see in our test that we have we also have a setup attribute but we have not really used this method at all so you can see that it is like public wide setup well we don't really have any tear down so yeah but that's other thing that you can do it as well. So how do we use the setup and the teardown attribute within our test? So as you can see in all our tests, we have been doing something like the iWeb driver of a new Chrome driver and then navigating to the website and maximizing the window. We used to do this line for every single test that we have written so far. Maybe we could just move them to the setup attribute. For example, we can set up the browser and the web page before we start running the test. So that is a way that we can say that, all right, this test is focused more towards performing a Google search test, but not really an test to you know open the Chrome driver or navigating to the browser and maximizing the window. So that is how we should write these things. So instead of writing this in the unit test.cs, I'm just going to create a new class file and I'm going to write from there because this class is going to be very confusing if we do it from here. So I'm going to say in unit tests demo and within this particular class file, I'm just going to make this as public for now and I'm going to write a setup attribute. So once I do a setup, you see that automatically Visual Studio is going to bring up this particular attribute it says setup attribute over here so i'm going to bring that up and it also shows me like public wide setup so i'm just going to use this method name which is not bad and over here we are going to set up the iweb driver itself so if you go back to our unit test 1.cs you see that this is the iweb driver of chrome driver we did all these things we could do the same thing as well over here so we can say iweb driver of driver is equal to new chrome driver uh, and we can also say driver dot url or navigate dot go to url of the string just nothing but http colon ea app dot somi dot com and we can also maximize the window so i'm just going to copy this code and i'm going to paste it over here so these are the setup operations that we have to do before we start running our test. And the test that we are going to be running is basically going to be, for example, the test with the page object model code. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it over here. But now, guess what? We don't have to do all these things that we are doing over here. My test is just to test with page object model but not to launch the browsers and all those setup operation because those things needs to be taken care in the setup operation. So I'm gonna get rid of these things over here. But once I do that, you'll realize that the driver object is missing. And the reason why this is missing is because the driver is initialized in the setup method. So I have to publicly expose this variable so that I can access that within this particular test with POM method. So how do I actually do it? Well, the way I can do it is I can just set a private iWeb driver of the driver variable over here. I make this as underscore. And I can copy this driver variable and paste it over here. So this way you can see that I get the driver variable itself. Let me change all the name of this particular driver. And you can see that I have used an underscore in the prefix of the driver because 
in C sharp world for any private member of a class it should be an underscore as a prefix so that it differentiates between a public variable with a private variable so this is a private variable so underscore driver that's why it is an underscore driver there so now that it is underscore driver is called a new chrome driver we have set the driver itself and now i can directly use this underscore driver over here and the test code looks quite neat so you can have this setup and there is a test operation so let's try to run this test and see if that works so i'm going to go to the test explorer and we have the any test demo it's automatically discovered as well and now if i try running the test it should open the chrome browser and run the test for me as usual and there we go you can see that the login operation is completed and these are all happening because of our nunit test has executed the test with the setup as the first one and then it executed the test for me but guess what as there is a setup attribute we also has got what is called as a tear down attribute so i can just say tear down over here and now i can also close the browser if i wanted to so i can just say public wide tear down and within the selenium there is an option called as quit so i can just say driver dot quit method which will close the browser for me so let me try to run this and see how it is going to look like so now you can see that the browser got opened it ran the test and then it also quit the browser for me so this is how we can make use of the nunit's attribute within our test to perform all these operations and now you can see that the test is very neat and clean so there is a setup attribute there is a test attribute to perform just the test and then there is a tear down attribute to close the driver operation so this is how we can use the nunit attributes within our test now next video we'll talk about even more attributes of nunit and then you will understand the power of the nunit test framework itself